There are two arteries used for dialysis access. These are the brachial artery, which is in the upper arm, and the radial artery, which is on the thumb side of the forearm. The ulnar artery is the other main artery in the forearm, but it is generally not used in fistulas. There are also two veins that can be used to connect to the artery. The first is the cephalic vein, which travels the entire length of the arm from the clavicle to the wrist, running along the anterior aspect slightly laterally. It is the preferred choice due to its length and easy accessibility for cannulation, as it is also closer to the skin. The second option is the basilic vein, which runs along the inner bicep and continues medially down to the wrist. It is only used in the upper arm for fistulas due to its course around the forearm bones that would make it too difficult for effective cannulation. The basilic vein is naturally deeper in the tissue and often needs to be surgically lifted to a more superficial tissue to be more accessible for cannulation. This procedure is called a basilic vein transposition or superficialization. To create the fistula, either the brachial artery can be surgically connected to the cephalic or basilic vein in the upper arm, or the radial artery can be connected to the cephalic vein in the forearm. Note that the radial artery cannot be connected to the basilic vein in the forearm because we just learned only the upper arm portion of the basilic vein is suitable for fistulas. A fistula anastomosis can also be created at the median cubital vein, which connects the cephalic and basilic veins near the antecubital fossa. Since fistulas may have complications, common practice is to make the anastomosis as close to the wrist as possible. That way, if there is outflow vein stenosis or occlusion, and the fistula is unsalvageable, the anastomosis can be surgically moved more proximally to a patent portion of the vein, or a new fistula can be created in the upper arm. For this reason, the most desired fistula is a radiocephalic fistula, which is made from the radial artery and the cephalic vein at the wrist. This is also known as a Brescia semino fistula, after its inventors. The second easiest option is a brachiocephalic fistula, which uses the brachial artery and the cephalic vein in the upper arm. If this is not possible, then a third option is a brachiobasilic fistula, which connects the brachial artery to the basilic vein in the upper arm. Remember that this type of fistula needs to be performed with a transposition to lift the basilic vein to a more superficial position. The surgeon will try to create the fistula in the patient's non-dominant arm first in case of complications. If the cephalic and basilic veins in that arm contain clot or have too small a diameter prior to fistula creation, then the opposite arm is used. Most surgeons prefer a pre-surgery vein diameter of at least 2.5 millimeters, although some will use 2 millimeters. If the veins in the opposite arm are not viable, then a plastic arteriovenous graft is anastomosed to the artery and vein instead to provide a segment for cannulation. One issue you should be aware of is that sometimes the high flow volume in a fistula can draw blood in the radial artery away from the hand, causing ischemia. This is called a steel or steel syndrome. However, there are two arteries in the forearm that supply the hand, so if the radial artery blood is stolen by the fistula, then the ulnar artery can take over supplying the hand. Steel syndrome can occur in all three types of fistulas, However, it's usually worse in the upper arm with a brachiocephalic or brachiobasilic fistula. This is because the brachial artery bifurcates into the radial and ulnar arteries, usually at the antecubital fossa. So a brachial artery fistula can steal from both vessels. This can diminish blood flow to the hand more than steel involving a radiocephalic fistula where only the radial artery is affected. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.